All right, then. I'm going to continue with this piece. I have messed with it a bit from the last time. Uh, let me zoom in a little more here. Yes, I made this fairly complete and finished. I added some stuff over here, darkened this in here, and also filled in this area and gave this area a bit more detail. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this thing here. And uh, pretty sure what I'm going to do with this stuff up here because it's already laid out. See, that's the trick. You're going to lay down your lines quickly so that you can uh, know what to do and not have to think about composition or whatever. That's what you're doing at the beginning anyway. You're laying down the lines really quickly. And that way, when it comes time to filling everything in, it goes a lot quicker. I don't always do that, but if I were to give advice to myself, that's what I would do. Today I'm going to introduce this. On this side, it's preferably clean, oilless paper. And on this side is the side that you will roll your pin around on and get some ink flowing and put your hand on. It's a bit yellowed from my oil. I replace these quite often. It's uh, just basic paper wrapped around some cardboard and glued like that. I have different sizes as well. Try not to touch this as much as possible. When I first started this, my intention was just to show some quick doodle strokes, whatever. You do this, and you do that, and you do this. And I will do that throughout these videos, but uh, this became something, as these pieces often do. So, what do I mean by that? Well, I'll just start drawing and then explain. Become something. What do I mean by it becomes something? Well, uh, I mean, it goes through elementary, primary, elementary, junior high, high school, and graduates and goes on as a fruitful career. But of course. But of course I don't mean that. I just mean that it uh, looks like something other than what we call a doodle or practice. So, before I was uh, explaining my thought processes as I'm going through this, but uh, I'm not sure if I quite hit it, and I was slowing down a bit. So I'm going to just, just go through this quickly. Or at my usual pace. And then see if something can be gleaned from that. I can distract myself, that's for that's for sure. I can do that. It's a rather quiet day in the neighborhood here. Often there is a construction happening outside. Houses being, being taken down, new houses being erected. 
That's the pattern of this neighborhood. When will it be complete? It will never be complete. Let's hope not. Wouldn't that mean we're all dead? Which will happen, certainly. All right, so I have somewhat established where the darks and lights are gonna go on the inside part here. Often I'll take my pen and I'll just roll it like that because ink does build up on the sides here. And then when you put your pen down, it goes on the paper. Not always a bad thing, but uh, I like to start out with as clean a nib as possible. This is a nib right here, the end part. Hmm. So what's going to happen in here is the question I'm asking myself right now. And my guess is I will darken it. But I will also separate it from this part right here. So. Yeah, that was all right. I turn the page to give my hand an advantage in how I lay down the line. It's, uh, I have much more control if I just keep my hand in this direction here. So I move the paper accordingly rather than my hand. Of course, that's not always how it goes. Look for the, the position that your hand feels most comfortable in. And then move the paper like I'm doing right now. Just move it around to accommodate that position. Just much easier. And you get a better result from that. Okay. That's all right. I thought that was pretty good. Right there. So let's see here. Yeah. I happen to have a lot of things feeding into each other. Things, lines, not things. Well, lines are things. Okay, so I have line things feeding into each other like this feeds into this, and this, into this. That's the aesthetic that I like. And if that's what you're going for, and you prefer that, stay tuned. I went to an art fair this weekend with my wife, and we were looking for galleries and doing some networking. It's interesting, it's the first art fair that I can remember going to. It's here, it was in Tokyo here. And um, it's interesting. I saw a lot of art, of course, but I wasn't quite sure what the art fair's goal was because there was a lot of, there were a lot of gallery representation. Well, galleries outright, there they were, having their artists' work displayed. Not a whole lot of art, honestly. Relatively speaking, it was fairly empty but then again i haven't been to any art fairs so i don't have anything to really judge it against <clears throat> so saw some art met some galleries gallerists galleryists and um yeah interesting 
people's attitudes. Some very forthcoming as far as like wanting to talk and mingle, talk about art, talk about artists. Some people were guarded, very interested in just showing the work, not really talking so much about it or even talking with people about potential collaboration, which is what we were there for. Not so much to see the art. It was interesting though, of course. I mean, I, I like looking at art, but um, not always. Depends on if I like it or not. That's just the way it goes, obviously. The surprising thing for me was that uh, there weren't a lot of artists. I met two. A whole day. It's a huge event. I met two artists. Are you the artist? No, I'm not the artist. How about you? Are you the artist? No. Often I got people to laugh at the question. Are you the artist? <laughs> no. No, I'm not the artist. Yeah, it turns out they're the... Like a gallery lackey or director or... the art world, which often, to me anyway, appears to be about everything but the art itself. It's about the business, it's about the promotion, it's about the gallery, it's about the prestige, it's about the sale. The art world. Managers, representatives, who knows who the art world. And we went there looking at this world that's really apart from us. Due to my lack of involvement over the years. I don't go out and meet people to my detriment, really. It's not a benefit to stay away. Just hadn't been in the cards for me, really. Mostly working on the art. This is why I, I feel uh, artists often would just prefer to have somebody else go out and do the art, I mean the uh, the pedaling for them because you know, it's not so fun, really. At least it isn't for me. Meeting people is interesting, though, of course. But, uh, yeah, hmm. The art world. It's its own beast. The art that I saw that I really liked was mostly texture. Uh, just like a big area of like a monotone almost of color. You get close and you see swirls and you see texture. I like that. That was calming. It was nice. A bit trendy with the um, Most anime faces, I saw a lot of that. You know, I mean, being in Japan here, of course, you're going to see a lot of anime, but I was a little surprised how similar some of this art was. It's trendy. There's trends in art, of course. There was an area dedicated to digital art. So there was a way to display the art. Two methods, physical and virtual, right? Or on a screen, I should say, a monitor. The other way is physical, so they had the, um, so originally digital, then turned into something physical. Uh, 
some of it was printed out on type of a canvas or I'm not sure the process there, but there's some process to perhaps it's just a jet printer, who knows? Somebody knows. I didn't know. Didn't pursue it too much, didn't look at it. I do digital work, but mostly it's really to show a preliminary before it becomes physical. Now, the majority of digital art I've made will never be made into a physical art, meaning I will recreate it with my hand. No, uh, because I just don't have time. I will become old and die before I can finish it all. And I'm always making new stuff. But it has its value for me. And the value is to practice. Okay. All right, so I have messed around with what I'm calling the inside part here. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. It's texture based mostly with some lines. I'm filling a lot of this in. Hmm. Okay. Let's back up a little bit and see how we're doing. Okay. So I just did a lot right there. And uh, some of that right there. So let's get back into it. I'm going to move into here. And notice something. We have, this is a line, 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 line. So there's these lines in here. So my question that I ask myself is, what do I want to do? Because I have this area out here. So if I darken this area, then to show some contrast. Will I darken this or keep this lighter? These are the questions that I have. Don't know. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, I have this area right here and it looks like it goes up into this area here, so. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to darken this. Just like that. Then I have this. Do the same thing. Yes. Good. And I have this area right in here. Now I like this kind of grayish tone, so I'm gonna continue that in this area. And let me see if I can do this rather quickly. Sometimes I just touch it like that. And then other times I, I put the pin down as a rather long stroke like that. Relatively long. Touch, touch, touch. Tap really. This same way I can do with pencil. Pencil has the advantage of being erasable. And smudgeable. But I don't really erase or smudge so much. I'm a purist. Oh, 
right? So I turned it around and <laughs> almost in the same direction. But I wanted to do some cross hatching, which means going one direction, then another direction. One, 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 two, two, two. I meant. But now I'm going to do the cross hatch. It's going to go in a different direction. And this helps to fill in some of the areas that were not filled in. Yes, Tokyo Art Fair 2022. We went on Sunday at Kokusai Forum in Yurakucho, which is a beautiful venue near Ginza, not right in Ginza, really. And uh, not so crowded, but not empty either. It was nice. It was a nice amount of people. We all did our best to social distance. People, of course, were wearing masks. I say, of course, because everyone wears masks everywhere in, in Japan. And we're doing it now because of the concern for spreading Omicron and COVID-19 and Delta variant. And now it's also hay fever season, which I have hay fever, and the mask actually helps with the pollen. So it's good. I like to wear the mask during hay fever season. It's going to get hot here soon, though. It's a hot... I was almost said city. Tokyo is not a city. It's a prefecture. It's like a city, though. It's a confusing part of Japan. So we're able to label it. All right. This is gray. And this is really dark, nearly black underneath there. So I might blend it. So when we arrived, as with most all venues, I'm not sure if, if it's that way because I'm not going out so much these days, but we would have our temperature taken by the, you know, placing our face in front of the screen. They would supply the, the alcohol for our hands. Yeah, everyone knows what to do at this point. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I darkened this area up, obviously. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. But it doesn't matter so much once it's done because it's done. If you're really concerned about whether or not you want to do something uh, with an area, do I want to darken this in? Do I not? I can't tell, I can't decide. Then scan it in some way into your computer, take a picture, put it on a flatbed. I don't know, or some way. Put it into your computer and just do a quick mock-up in one of your graphics programs. See if it if it works. I have not done that, I don't think. I have created digital work that I've put to my pen, but I'm not sure if I've ever tested out something. I don't recall. Mostly no. I just go for it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it does not. All right, now at this area right here. Now notice I turn the page so that all I have to do is this way. With my fingers, with my pen. 
Now also, something to consider is that there's this area here. So maybe I should pull the stroke all the way there. Yeah, I think I will. Oh, and I'm already starting out a little dark. Didn't mean for it to be so dark, but there it is. I want to keep a little line around here, so a little white. five o'clock. So I've been at this about 30 minutes, which seems like the right amount of time to spend on a drawing. So this session I have talked a bit about going around hunting galleries with my wife at Tokyo Art Fair. I've talked about protecting art with this kind of... Lodging that a little bit. This type of thing, which is important. Please do this if you're going to use paper and your hand. Clean your hands before you draw. Alcohol works really well. Got all soap and water. But oil remains, so it's best to use some type of a, of a, what do you call this? I don't know. Some protective, protective barrier between the paper and your, and your hands. I've seen people use plastic, clear plastic. I've seen tracing paper, which is kind of interesting. I prefer this a little thick. It's got a cushion and you can use it to roll your, the, the ink, as you can see, I've done that. This is like maybe one drawing here. I need a new one of these. Just be aware of the oil. Try to touch your drawing as little as possible. A couple reasons. The oil will eventually break apart the fibers of the paper, I suspect. You know what? I'm not sure. It might bind them. Who knows? I'm just assuming that's the case. I just assume it's not good for the paper. But I do know this, that the oil does get in the way of making um, the uh, the line work. The ink doesn't let the ink settle very well onto the page. And that's a problem. Could be a problem. So, yeah, keep your paper clean. So, Tokyo Art Fair 2022, went into a little bit of detail about that. My feeling about the art world, which I am fairly ambiguous about right now because I have not entered it so much. I've had a couple shows in Tokyo but uh, I'm not really in the world. I'd like to be, maybe, we'll see. I definitely would like to sell my drawings. I would definitely like my art to be known in the world, certainly. I would like to do this only as my means of, of having an income. Yes, yes, yes. What a wonderful life. What do you do? 
I create for a living. Yeah, I think that can be done. Give up my day job or transition my job from what I'm doing now to drawing. Yes, that is a, a nice little plan, which I think I will pursue. And finally, what I have done, and I've saved the talking about this because I'm still doing it. I have worked on this area in here. Here, a little bit here, there. Yeah, that's it. Didn't get a whole lot done today. Got enough done. I will work on this a little more, I think, before the next session so I can get some areas complete. I'd like to finish this up in the next one, the next session. So what do I have to do? Let's talk about what needs to be done next. This part in here, I think, looks pretty good. This down here works for me. I need to tie in this area up in here somehow. Maybe this will be connected. This needs to be finished. It's just roughly drawn. This is just from the very beginning, the first session where I just drew the lines very quickly. And then put some sort of, I'm thinking, um, a swooping background, something to pull this more front and center. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this little thing here. It's not where I want it to be. It's not doing what I want it to do. Perhaps whatever it is that's in the background can come through these leg areas. Connect somehow. We'll see. It'll show its solution at some point, if I keep working on it. Sometimes these drawings just do a complete 180 from what I intend. Sometimes I just don't finish them, and then I just call it practice. So, no loss there. It's always good to... Keep up your chops by doing it. All right. Shall I call it done? Yeah, this session I believe uh, we'll call done. So, uh, yeah. Until next time. Out.